Okay guys, so I'm going to continue the paradox video for INTJs. So I'll talk about how INTJs are both the greatest pessimist but also reassuringly optimistic. Uh, these types of paradoxes tend to exist in all types. So for instance, ENFPs may appear quite optimistic on the outside but inside there, there's a tendency towards pessimism. So okay, so let's, let's talk about INTJs. Um, when others, when someone is enthusiastic about something, the INTJ may be the first to pour cold water on it and talk about how it would not work out. However, this is because INTJs are very measured people. Sometimes they can act sure of their calculations of failure, but they tend to overestimate the degrees something would go wrong or how long they have to wait until they carry out an initiative or a dream they have. So when others feel downtrodden, on the other hand, this is when INTJs show another side of them. They could actually be great sympathetic listeners because this is when their tertiary FI is activated. They are confidants that people could uh, trust and could, they could pull aside and talk to. And INTJs could be quite encouraging because they could see how the person who has lost spirits is only seeing a small picture. And with their NI, they could see how the bigger picture is a much more reassuring and positive, is, is much more reassuring and positive in general. So the INTJs SE may even be activated and they will encourage the fighting spirit of the person who is losing their spirits. So, an example of this would be the film Gattaca. It's my, it's my favorite movie. And in the movie, the main character, Vincent, wants to go into space. Um, he's not allowed since he is considered a genetic invalid because he's born naturally. Um, but he has a lot of determination. So I'm not sure what his type is, but his willpower is symbolic of SE, expert sensing, even if he's not an expert sensing type. Um, there's a grumbling character in the movie, Jerome Morrow, who is essentially an INTJ in an unhealthy state. So he's not really representative of all INTJs, but one who's unhealthy and who has all these SE addictions, um, drinking a lot, things like that. And um, Jerome does does create a clever means for Vincent to obtain his dreams, and this is very INTJ, um, which is to have Vincent pretend to be him, since Jerome was born genetically superior, and thus el eligible for the space program. So when Vincent loses his spirits during the movie, Jerome is no longer a grumbler, and he actually becomes really reassuring and encouraging. So Vincent worries that he will be found out as a fake, as a fraud, but Jerome, the INTJ, could see the bigger picture, how no one in the space program would believe that one of their elite, Vincent, could have suckered them all this time. So, I just, I just like snorted. Uh, he also encourages Vincent to keep up his fighting spirit. So, uh, Vincent can be skeptical, I mean INTJs, INTJs can be skeptical of specific initiatives at first. However, if you hear INTJs talk about the grand scheme of things, like at a global scale, they actually tend to be a more positive than most. So where others see no hope, INTJs can put things into the proper perspective where they know from the history of time that this lack of hope is totally uncalled for. So, um, INTJs, they need some time to sit with initiatives. So if you present one uh, to them, they may not seem too excited at first or they may kind of like kind of push it away, but you have to just l let them think about it. And th they'll actually consider it. So on the, on the inside, on the inside, INTJs actually do want spontaneous stimulation, especially since they tend towards passivity and a sense of emptiness. And they really want to escape from this. So 
it's like um, they, they will consider others' initiatives after some hesitation and they actually kind of secretly want this. And an ex excellent example of this would be the video series, the YouTube uh, channel INTJ ENFP Relationship. Um, that, that's a great example of this. So my next point is that INTJs are outwardly, they're outwardly serious and want to be in control, but the more you know them, they actually have quite a wacky sense of humor and they're quite adaptable. It's almost as if they don't actually don't take themselves too seriously. Um, so INTPs and INFPs like myself, we may be outwardly relaxed, a lot of us are, but inwardly we're kind of neurotic and rigid. So INTJs, just like INFJs, are the other way around. So they are ultimately perceiving types with NI. So NI is kind of like this really chill dream state. Um, so people may think that INTJs are serious, but INTJs and INFJs actually tend to play this comic relief kind of role. Um, because um, NI comes up with the funniest, the funniest stuff, the funniest images ever. So if you watch the movie I mentioned Gattaca, Jerome Morrow was clearly the comic relief in that movie. So INTJs and I is so global, they may be prone to take themselves too seriously, but at the same time, since they see the bigger picture, they know at a deeper level they, not to take things too seriously. They know that when things go bad, the tide will turn turn to other directions, like um, knowing the archetypes of human experience and knowing that things will turn around. So why can INTJs be such global thinkers and yet also nitpicky about small logical details? So the, their value functions are NI, TE, FI, and SC. However, TI is a very strong function of INTJs, and I talk about this in another video. Um, so, INTJs value FI, introverted feeling, but they're very strong at TI. Not just TE, they're very strong at TI. So, value is something that you favor, and strong is something that you're good at. There's something, you could, you could, you, you could favor, like, you could like piano, but you could suck at it. So, you could be, you could favor, but you're weak at it. You could also be strong at something that you don't like. Maybe... You're very good at playing the piano, but you don't really like it. So this is how TI is for them. So INTJs are quite capable of TI. They tend to express it negatively, as in finding problems with other people's arguments and kind of nitpicking on that. Thus, they're able to deduce flaws very well, but it's not what they ultimately prefer. They, preferred global and I kind of thinking. Um, excuse me. Um, INTJ's FI can become can become strong, but after a life experience or a certain level of activation, such as seeing a loved one feeling quite down, this FI gets activated and becomes kind of strong. So they can actually be great listeners, as I have mentioned. It comes out in INTJs in certain ways, FI, in, in such ways such as um, having strong moral convictions or unapologetically distinctive personal habits. So another INTJ paradox is that they may seem unromantic or not interested in romance on the outside, but inside they're secretly very romantic and they could romanticize their lives or they, they look for someone who will love them unconditionally and they're very selective about who they let in because they're very vulnerable in this area. So another thing is that people tend to accuse INTJs of making their mistaking their subjective opinions for facts. This is both true and untrue. So NI plus TE can in fact produce a remarkably objective perspective on things because TE almost, even though it's a judging function, almost acts like a perceiving function because it collects information. And um, however, INTJs have tertiary F5 which trips them up and so, and they're not aware to the extent that 
this influences their perspectives. This this personal personal subjective factor influences their um, perspective on things. Um, also, development of SE and INTJ would also greatly help to have a realistic perspective.